This edition of Timeline presents Shakespeare's Image. The death of English playwright William Shakespeare is situated on the timeline early in the 17th century in 1616. To put this in perspective, Queen Elizabeth I of England was born in 1533 and the English Glorious Revolution took place in 1688. English playwright William Shakespeare has been commemorated in a number of different paintings, engravings, statues, and memorials around the world. Authentic representations of his true likeness, however, are very rare and extremely controversial. A possible painting of the poet has sparked international debate amongst historians, art collectors, scientists, and academics. The controversial portrait is of a youthful man with the beginning of a receding hairline who appears alert, keen-eyed, mischievous, and flirtatious, with an enigmatic, ironical smile. He looks out from his portrait with a tolerant, world-weary air, slight smirk, and half-twinkle in his eye. The painting is said to be the work of Elizabethan actor-artist John Sanders, who was born in Worcester, England in 1575. Like the bard himself, Sanders as a young man made the journey to London to seek his fortune, and became involved with Shakespeare's theatre company as a bit actor, and for reasons unknown, painted Shakespeare's portrait during his lifetime in 1603, the date on the painting. The Sanders family stayed in the Worcester area until the early 1900s when a large branch of the family immigrated to Canada, bringing the portrait with them. The painting is slightly damaged at the top, but otherwise well preserved, with rich bright colours. It shows a Shakespeare with fluffy red hair and blue-green eyes, an appearance that matches descriptions of him in the journals of his contemporaries Christopher Marlowe and Francis Bacon. The painting has been kept in the Sanders family, handed down with care through twelve generations and identified in wills. Throughout the centuries, it was hung on a dining room wall and stored under various beds and in several closets. The painting has been exhibited only once, in the early 1960s, but the portrait, then unauthenticated, aroused little interest. The public controversy over this portrait began in 1909 when the painting's owner took it to a London expert on Shakespearean images, who concluded that it could not be the playwright. The expert claimed that the style of the painting was typical of the 17th century, but he believed that parts of the painting had been altered sometime after its inception and that the note affixed to the back of the painting was not authentic. Recent scientific testing, however, has questioned this judgment. Analysis indicates that the painting was not forged in the 19th century, and the wooden panel on which the painting was executed dates from as early as 1597. Also, analysis of the paint flakes are consistent with 17th century methods. The major point of contention regarding the painting's authenticity surrounds a rag linen paper note affixed to its back upper right hand corner. While time has rendered the words on this paper largely illegible, a transcription was made in 1909. While the paper on which the note was written is consistent with the type of paper used in Shakespeare's day, images of the remains of this note taken under ultraviolet light show handwriting that is not consistent with scripts used by Shakespeare and his contemporaries. Instead, the note is in a script which did not appear until the 1700s. Certain scholars believe that this evidence is corroborated by the wording of the note that suggests an 18th century origin. While some connoisseurs feel that this is proof of the painting's inauthenticity, others feel that a member of the Sanders family probably added the note at a later date. The weight of evidence on either side of this argument suggests that the controversy surrounding this portrait will not end anytime soon. Although many portraits and engravings exist of Shakespeare, at present the only authentic likenesses of the bard are considered to be a bust on his tomb in the Church of the Holy Trinity in Stratford, cast after his death, possibly from a death mask, and approved by his wife Anne Hathaway. And a print done by the artist Martin Drusout for the frontispiece of the first folio of his plays, which seems to have been taken from a sketch that has never been found. The engraving too, seems to have been approved by his wife. It was published in 1623, following his death. After his death, as Shakespeare's reputation grew, artists created portraits and narrative paintings depicting him, 
most of which were based on earlier images, but some of which were purely imaginative. He was also increasingly commemorated in memorial sculptures around the world. At the same time, the demand for authentic portraits fed a market for fakes and misidentifications. Few individuals are as culturally important in English-speaking cultures as Shakespeare, and thus artifacts and ideas that challenge established traditions surrounding his canonical figure are likely to continue to meet with academic and social resistance. Yet, Shakespeare's cultural importance lies in his words, not his image. Therefore, the search for Shakespeare's authentic image may simply be much ado about nothing. As mentioned, the death of William Shakespeare is situated on the timeline in 1616. In each edition, our timeline is presented in a simple manner that is easy to comprehend and fun to replicate for school projects. Shakespeare was baptized and also likely born in 1564. To put this in perspective, simply insert this event at the appropriate location on the timeline. This concludes our fascinating look at Shakespeare's image. We hope you have enjoyed this presentation and look forward to meeting you again soon along the timeline.